Hi everybody, join me to explore the world of agriculture in Australia where farmers face difficult challenges when confronting millions of wild boars that invade crops during the harvest season. The best wild boar hunting season is often done by helicopter. Come along with me to discover the unique and effective strategies Australian farmers use to tackle this problem. Don't take your eyes off the screen to watch the video below. Are you ready to embark on a journey to learn about the damage caused by wild boars? Did you know that every year wild boars have a significant population growth rate of about 20 to 25 percent? This poses major challenges in terms of its rapid reproduction and ability to adapt to a variety of environments, making management difficult. Biologists and wildlife managers estimate that 60 to 70 percent of wild boar populations need to be removed each year to balance the ecosystem. Currently, wild boar populations are large and intelligent animals, adults weighing up to 661 pounds. Due to their large body weight, finding food becomes difficult and will consume large amounts of food, big food. The travel speed of hunting wild boar by helicopter reaches a speed of 100 to 100 to 150 mph, and Australia is one of the popular countries for this hunting activity with its flat terrain, open forests, and swamps. The terrain in Australia creates favorable conditions for wild boar hunting. In this video, you will witness an exciting hunt with hunters dealing with invasive wild boars. Are you curious about what means of transport they use to defeat wild boars? Please comment on number one to continue this journey. During hunting, using helicopters brings many benefits. For this purpose, helicopter-type helicopters are often preferred. Helicopter provides the ability to move quickly and flexibly in jungle environments or complex terrain. Thanks to their ability to fly low and turn quickly, they can reach hard-to-reach areas quickly and efficiently. This helps hunters conveniently move to hunting areas, while also helping to reduce time and effort compared to walking or using road vehicles. However, the use of helicopters must comply with safety and environmental regulations to ensure it does not affect the natural environment and wildlife. An indispensable tool in the hunting process is specialized hunting equipment. If this tool is missing during a hunt, the hunter's hunt will fail. Before entering the hunting journey, the hunter needs time to carefully prepare and hone the necessary hunting techniques. Mastering accurate targeting techniques is an important factor requiring high concentration, when facing wild boars, hunters often use a specialized tool called a wild boar hunting tool. Wild boar hunting tools often operate on a manual loading mechanism bolt action. After each release of medicine, the hunter needs to pull the barrel up to push the new medicine into position. This process requires dexterity and meticulousness to keep the target in sight and avoid making loud noises, causing wild boars to panic and run away. The structure of this tool includes a sturdy handle, helps the hunter maintain a steady posture when releasing the drug. The barrel is designed to optimize accuracy and long range, combined with large caliber ammunition to ensure the power needed to take down wild boars. Wild boar hunting tools not only serve as support tools, aids in hunting but is also an indispensable part of the hunter's hunting experience. Combined with hunting tools, hunters need to choose the appropriate type of gas. In the Australian hunting community, one of the most commonly used aerosols is 6.5 Creedmoor, known for its versatility and effectiveness in hunting. 
for hunters the choice between ammunition types often depends on their specific purpose. For example, for beginners or those looking to get into hunting, the 6.5 Creedmoor is a great choice due to its ease of use, high accuracy, and reasonable price. Meanwhile, those who want a more precise aim on hunts can choose the 6mm Dasher with its remarkable accuracy and stability. On the other hand, hunters looking to hunt larger wild boar can choose the 308 Winchester with three times the power of the 6.5 Creedmoor. After being fully equipped for the hunting process, hunting wild boars by helicopter is an exciting and challenging experience. Hunters will search for wild boars from above, high, then use hunting tools to take them down and comply with our relevant laws. The number of wild boars hunted each year ranges from a few hundred to several million. When discovering wild boars, the hunter will immediately notify the pilot, and together they will fly to the hunting location to hunt them. Time to hunt wild boar in Australia, winter from June to August, and autumn from March to May. To hunt in Australia, you need to have a hunting license issued by the government from the management department. Wild animals. Hunting licenses are usually for one year. Hunters use hunting tools to take down their targets, especially wild boars. This method is usually done by hunting from behind the head or neck, ensuring that the kill takes place. Out quickly and effectively, the average visibility of a hunting helicopter is 750 feet, meaning they are capable of hitting targets at this distance. However, there are hunting devices that can work at a range of 1,000 feet. which expands the hunter's ability to take down wild boar in a variety of locations and different approaches that require precision and skill on the part of the hunter and pilot. When landing a helicopter at a safe altitude depends on the terrain and the type of helicopter rotor. Helicopters also make it easier for hunters to spot them in the bush, however, Taking down wild boars is often most effective when they are moving or foraging, and dense forest areas give hunters easier access to the wild boar. Can kill five to 10 wild boars in each hunt. This activity also has disadvantages when hunting in areas near populated areas. This method allows hunters to reach remote areas and take down large numbers of wild boars in a short time. If hunters still want to hunt in areas near residential areas, they should be cautious and consider carefully before using this method to ensure safety and protect the surrounding environment. Many people believe that using helicopters to kill wild boars can disrupt the ecological balance. However, using helicopters for hunting can cause environmental pollution due to noise and exhaust fumes. Noise can affect water quality and air emissions from helicopters. Hunting wild boars is often considered inhumane because it can lead to the extermination of young or pregnant wild boars. This method is becoming increasingly popular in Australia because of its effectiveness and speed, but it also faces many challenges. Since wild boar intelligence can affect the efficiency of wild boar handling, please leave number two if you think this method can be improved to reasonably reduce the wild boar population. Tell us how you feel about the hunting journey of Australian hunters. Please comment number one if you are a hunter who has used hunting tools in the video. Comment zero if you are interested in the Australian Hunter's helicopter hunting experience. Thank you for accompanying us until the end of the video. Click the like button and subscribe to the channel to watch the latest videos about the journey of dealing with invasive species.
The Australian wild goat, originating from Africa, is a mammal with an average size of about 100 to 150 centimeter in length and weighing 20 to 30 kilograms. Wild goats are omnivorous. They like to eat grass, leaves, fruits, and many other plants. However, the invasion of wild goats in Australia has caused significant negative impacts on the environment. First of all, their ability to eat everything pose a major problem in terms of vegetation destruction. Wild goats not only eat grass, but also native plants, leading to the environmental degradation and loss of biodiversity. In addition, competition with native animals is also an important issue. Wild goats compete with them for food and shelter, which can lead to significant declines in the numbers and diversity of native animals. Not only that, but wild goats also have the potential to transmit diseases faced with these challenges Farmers in Australia have taken countermeasures by capturing wild goats to raise. They take advantage of this species' resources by using meat and milk from wild goats while reducing their invasive pressure on the environment and native animals. They changed the way they cared for wild goats to domesticate them. Raising them in captivity on farms for a while and letting them roam freely in fenced areas prevents them from escaping. Raising wild goats outdoors will help them adapt and develop better during the breeding and care process. They will be free to eat the leaves and grass they like on the hilly grazing areas. This process requires a lot of skills and perseverance. However, wild goats are one of the species with quite good natures, so they can quickly be raised like other domestic goat farms. Additionally, to deal with this challenge, the Australian government has introduced a series of hunting measures to control the size of the population. Government statistics shows that every day, Australian farmers conduct about 100 wild goat hunts. Although a decrease of about 20% in wild goat numbers has been recorded. A high stable population still exists, posing a challenge to the environmental balance. Every year, Australian farmers destroy about 2 million wild goats. However, the number of wild goats remains high, about 20 million, a clear indication that current hunting methods are not effective at all. For hunting measures to be more effective, close coordination between the government, farmers and relevant organizations is needed. The government needs to have policies to support farmers in hunting wild goats, such as providing modern and effective hunting tools, training hunting skills for farmers and supporting farmers in hunting. Collecting and treatment of wild goat carcasses, farmers need to be fully equipped with knowledge and skills about hunting to ensure safety for themselves and the environment.
relevant organizations need to participate in monitoring wild goat hunting to ensure hunting is carried out legally and effectively. At the same time, researching and applying new methods is also an important tool to improve the effectiveness of control measures and minimize unwanted negative impacts. By taking advantage of the innovative use of bows and arrows, Australian farmers have established a unique strategy that is specially effective in mountainous areas where wild goats often encroach and cause environmental damage. In addition to being an ancient weapon, the bow and arrow has become a tool that brings high precision, helping to minimize negative impacts on the environment. Every day, hunters can harvest 5 to 10 wild goats, making an important contribution to controlling the number of invasive wild goats. This stabilization not only reduces damage to vegetation, but also limits competition with native animals and reduces the risk of diseases transmission. When archery hunting was introduced, Australia recorded an approximately 20% reduction in wild goat numbers, an encroaching achievement in efforts to control invasive wild goats. This is not only the result of the choice of hunting tools, but also the effectiveness of intelligent management and environmental protection. Consuming wild goat's meat is both an effective and a sustainable way to deal with wild goats in Australia. Wild goat meat is of high quality and can be processed into many delicious dishes. Consuming wild goat meat will help solve the problem of overabundance of wild goat meat, while also creating a source of income for farmers and related organizations. According to the study by the University of New South Wales, Australia, consuming wild goat meat can help reduce the number of wild goats in Australia by about 20%. This study shows that as more wild goat meat is consumed, the price of wild goat meat will decrease, making wild goat hunting more attractive to farmers. So this will lead to an increase in the number of wild goats being hunted and destroyed. According to a report by the Australian Environmental Management Agency, EPA, in 2022, Australia will consume about 10,000 tons of wild goat meat, equivalent to about 22 million pounds. This number has doubled compared to 2012. The increase in wild goat meat consumption has helped create jobs for about 5,000 hunters. These hunters are usually farmers or local people. They earn income from hunting and selling wild goat meat. Income from wild goat meat consumption is estimated at $100 million per year. This money is used to support wild goat control activities as well as environmental conservation programs. Have you ever tried these wild species before? If so, please leave all your thoughts and comments down below in the comment section. And finally, if you truly enjoyed this video, do not forget to share like and subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications bell so you're always staying tuned 
with any of our upcoming videos. See you again. A shocking incident occurred in 2021 when a herd of wild boars invaded a corn farm in Kentucky. This was an attack that not only caused extensive damage to the farm but also posed a serious problem in terms of management and control of the wild boar population. The feral pigs devastated more than 200 acres of corn, causing approximately $2 million in property damage. Literally all the corn fields were destroyed by wild boars. They destroyed crops by digging into the soil, eating plants and trampling on remaining plants. The large holes in the ground they dug caused serious destruction and a large amount of corn was consumed. On a national scale, damage caused by wild boars to agriculture is estimated to amount to billions of dollars each year. According to the U.S. Natural Resources Services Administration, in 2022, this damage has reached an estimated figure of $2.5 billion, an alarming figure. Wild boars have become a major threat to agriculture and require cooperation between governments, regulation agencies, and farmers to find effective solutions to control wild boar populations and minimize losses that are pretty harmful. Field hunting of feral hogs is an important method of controlling feral hog populations in the United States. Wild boars are often attracted to corn and wheat fields, as they often form large herds, creating favorable conditions for jam lovers. However, to ensure safety and efficiency in wild boar hunting, it is necessary to comply with rules and quality measures. According to estimates by the U.S. Natural Resources Services Administration, about 1 million feral hogs are hunted in the field in the United States each year, representing a significant portion of the total wild hog population hunted in the field. This country points to the importance of wild boar hunting in controlling their populations. There are about 2 million wild boar hunters in the United States, and a large portion of them are Americans. This shows the popularity and interest in feral pig control. However, to ensure safety and effectiveness in hunting, hunters need to follow some rules and take specific measures. Hunting wild boar in the field requires the use of highly accurate guns to ensure accuracy and target shooting and avoid endangering people or other animals. Using hunting dogs to search for wild boars in bushes and tall grass is also an important measure. Hunting wild boars during the day helps to see the target more clearly and increases safety in identifying targets to shoot. At the same time, hunting in groups is also an important measure. By having a team organized in the field, hunters can maximize visibility, detection, and ensure safety during the hunt.
Hunting as a team in the field offers many benefits. It increases the likelihood of wild boar sighting by sharing responsibility and covering more areas. Hunters also have the ability to coordinate actions to increase their chances of spotting wild boars and reduce the risk of injuries. However, when hunting in teams in the field, it is necessary to follow safety rules and communicate clearly. This ensures that everyone in the squad always knows each other's location, uses calls or signals to communicate, and never fires when they're unsure of their targets. Additionally, being careful when moving around the hunting area is important to ensure the safety of everyone in the team. According to estimates by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the escape of approximately 1 million feral hogs into the wilderness in the United States each year represents a significant challenge to wildlife management. This number accounts for about 20% of all feral hogs hunted in the United States. When these pigs are released into the wild, they often have an invasive behavior during hunting activities and seek refuge in the forest. They tend to wait for darkness to set in before venturing out in search of food. Their natural survival instincts drive them to seek refuge in densely wooded areas, such as forests where they can find protective cover and avoid detection. Wild boars hunting in the United States is a popular and an important activity in controlling wild boars populations, which are harmful to agriculture and the environment. Wild boars often gather in large herds and live in dense forest environments, creating favorable conditions for hunters. When participating in wild boar hunting activities in the forest, hunters often use a number of different methods. The most common method is using hunting gears. Hunting tools can provide long range and high accuracy. However, safety regulations should be followed when using them. Wild boars hunting time is also an important factor. Wild boars are usually active at night, so hunting during the day is a good choice. However, hunting at night can also be more dangerous so it is necessary to use appropriate safety equipment, such as infrared lighting, hunting wild boars in groups and the forest has many advantages by sharing responsibilities. Hunters can cover more areas and increase their chances of fighting wild boars. Additionally, when there are multiple hunters, they can support each other and minimize the risk of injuries. Hunting wild boars in the forest is an effective method to control the wild boar's population and protect the environment. Hunting wild boars nowadays is becoming more and more difficult as the population is increasing rapidly. There are many other measures to prevent invasive wild boar populations. Now let's see more in some other areas.
Invasive crickets are becoming a serious problem in the U.S. farms, especially when they destroy crops and dig up soil to build nests. This is an omnivore capable of consuming a variety of foods, from crops to grass, even plastic. Their ability to reproduce rapidly greatly increases the pressure on agriculture, as they can produce up to 1,000 eggs at a time. Invasive crickets not only damage grain, vegetable, and fruit crops, but they also have difficulty digging into the ground to make nests. Their nests can be up to one meter in diameter and up to one meter deep, creating areas of land subsidence that can be dangerous to both humans and animals. The impact of invasive crickets on agriculture in the United States is not to be taken lightly. It is estimated that each year they cause damage of up to $100 million, creating a significant economic burden. The invasive cricket species, which initially appeared in California in 2016, has expanded to include California, Arizona, Nevada, Utah, and Colorado and will likely continue to expand to other areas of the United States. They often live in warm, moist areas, such as near rivers, lakes, and swamps. However, they cannot be excluded from urban areas. When they appear on the streets, they cause many nuisances from blocking traffic when crawling across the street to the risk of being run over by cars, creating dirty and dangerous streets. In addition, this invasive cricket species also creates nests around people's houses and grounds in many different ways. It can burrow nest under objects such as rocks, wood, or even penetrate into cervix and buildings. This action not only harms the plants and flowers they chose, but also creates noise and discomfort for residents. The impact of invasive crickets goes beyond just being a daily burden. They can cause significant damage to agriculture and the environment in the United States. Simultaneously destroying crops because economic losses about to 100 to 500 million dollars a year. Furthermore, these crickets also carry health-related problems such as allergies and infections. In the United States, to control invasive cricket populations, a variety of pesticides are commonly used. These include powder, liquid, and gel pesticides, which are used to kill crickets in a variety of environments. These pesticides often contain ingredients such as pyrethroids, organophosphates, and neonicotinoids which can be harmful to human and animal health, requiring careful use. In addition to commercial pesticides, these are a number of solutions from common household products that can also be applied. For an example, bacon soda cricket killer is made by mixing bacon soda with sugar, creating a mixture that crickets eat and cannot survive due to a chemical reaction. Cricket spraying is considered an effective tool for controlling cricket populations. However, this requires special attention, such as carefully reading the instructions for use, 
spraying during the day and focusing on areas with many crickets. Exact figures on the number of crickets destroyed each year are not available, but estimates are in the millions. To ensure public safety during cricket control, cricket spray needs to take place in areas free of people and pets. Wearing protective gear such as gloves, masks and goggles is also important to avoid exposure to cricket pesticides. Other precautions include not spraying indoors in areas with underground water sources and in areas with lots of plants and flowers. Raising crickets and harvesting them for hunting and pet consumption is an effective strategy for controlling cricket populations. This strategy is based on reducing the food source of crickets, thereby achieving effective control of their numbers in the natural environment. Crickets are omnivores and can enjoy a variety of foods such as plants, grass and even plastic. When they are raised for food, they consume food sources that humans and pets do not like, such as leftover vegetables, fruit peels and remaining seeds. This not only helps reducing their food sources in the natural environment, but also limits the significant increase in cricket population. In addition, processing crickets into products such as cricket powder, cricket meat and cricket oil is also a solution. These products not only enrich human and pet food sources, but also reduce pressure on other food sources such as chicken, beef and fish. This also helps controlling cricket populations in natural environments. In the United States, the strategy of raising crickets and harvesting them to control cricket populations has been implemented since the 2010s, starting in areas where crickets cause the most problems such as California, Arizona and Nevada. It is worth nothing that this strategy has been effective in reducing invasive cricket populations. Especially in California, the number of invasive crickets has decreased by about 50% in the past few years, mainly thanks to the reduction of their food sources in the natural environment. And finally, before I go, I'd like to ask you one question. What would you do if you encountered any of these species? What would be your best solution? Please, feel free to share all your comments and thoughts down below in the comments section now. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to share, like and subscribe to the channel. And turn on your notifications bell, so you do not miss out on any of our upcoming videos. And for now, allow me to invite you to continue watching the rest of the video. European rabbits, with their ability to reproduce extremely quickly, are an animal that has major impact on Australia's environment and economy. Within a year, a single female rabbit can give birth to hundreds of offsprings, and their ability to adapt to a variety of habitats has caused them to explode dramatically in Australia including in the dry Australian territories as well. European rabbits, with their omnivorous diet, have destroyed the habitats of many native animals, 
putting them at risk of extinction. The cause soil erosion and reduce agricultural productivity by digging nest holes and eating grass and leaves, reducing vegetation. The economic damage caused by them is estimated to be up to $1.5 billion annually, with about $1 billion for environmental damage and $500 million for agricultural damage. Invasive rabbit epidemics in Australia have spread across the Australian continent, including arid areas such as deserts and mountainous areas. However, the hardest hit areas are those with temperature and humid climates where vegetation thrives. The largest rabbit hunt in Australia was held in 1923. This hunt was organized by the Australian government to control the wild rabbit population that was exploding at that time. In this hunt, more than 100,000 people participated. With the total number of wild rabbits caught reaching millions, this hunt has contributed significantly to controlling the wild rabbit population in Australia. Daytime rabbit hunting in Australia is an activity typically carried out in areas with thriving vegetation, such as grasslands, the savanna, or the bushes. Australia has many areas that are ideal for this hunting activity, including the grasslands of the south and southeast with temperature climates the savanna regions of the central region with arid climates, and the bushes regions in the east and the north with tropical climates. Daytime hunting of Australian rabbits usually begins when it is fully light. Hunters will look for wild rabbits, which often appears during the day, hiding under bushes or trees. When a wild rabbit is discovered, the hunter aims to shoot and kill the rabbit accurately to avoid causing unnecessary pain. Wild rabbits are then harvested to be processed into food or used as animal feed. During hunting, participants need to comply with Australian hunting laws, choose the correct type of hunting equipment, and comply with safety rules, such as pre-use inspection and use of hunting equipment in safe places. Respecting the environment is an important factor as well, and controlling the number of rabbits hunted each day also depends on many factors such as the skills of each hunter, weather conditions, and the hunting area. It is necessary to ensure that this activity is carried out in a safe and a suitable manner, avoiding negative impacts on the environment and other animals. Hares are often more active at night when they come out of their burrows to feed, drink water and breed. Hunting at this time can take advantage of their activity, reducing the risk of injury to hunters because they are less alert in dark conditions.
Hunting rabbits at night increases the effectiveness of controlling rabbit populations. At night, hunters can catch more rabbits than hunting during the day. This method is often practiced by groups of hunters, using headlights to detect hares. When they see them, hunters will use hunting tools to catch them immediately. Each hunter can catch about 20 to 30 rabbits in one night, but the actual number may be lower due to the skills and the variety of hunting areas. Hunting rabbits at night has been shown to be effective in controlling invasive rabbit populations in Australia. According to estimates by the Australian government, about 100 million rabbits are destroyed each year, making an important contribution to efforts to control and protect Australia's environment and ecosystem. Although it can be considered a form of hunting, hunting rabbits at night is different from other forms of hunting in terms of time and method. This is a particular and effective way to control wild rabbits' populations and ensures environmental sustainability. The use of hunting dogs and drones to hunt wild rabbits is also widely practiced using an airplane. Pilots can easily detect rabbits in a large area. This job can be combined with other jobs in the same plane, and no rabbit is missed. In addition, hunting dogs also have very good noses. They can help find and even catch hares in a simple way. These solutions have been used and are effective against the types of invasions. So what about other species? Let's take a look at some other measures people use to deal with these pests. Britain's iconic red squirrel is in trouble. The problem is the invasive eastern gray squirrel, introduced to Britain from North America about 140 years ago. Wealthy 19th century collectors enjoyed keeping gray squirrels as pets or releasing them on their estates as lively lawn ornaments. In fact, there is genetic evidence that all grey squirrels in Ireland descended from six pairs, sent as wedding gifts. Grey squirrels are bad news for native red squirrels because they compete with them for food and habitat. Worst of all, greys carry a virus called chickenpox. It is not harmful to gray squirrels or humans, but it is fatal to red squirrels. Many conservation groups working to save red squirrels have had some success. Gray squirrels were almost wiped out from the Isle of Anglesey. It took 18 years, but now the red squirrel species on the island are on the road to recovery. There is hope that nature can help. However, with the ability to reproduce very quickly, a gray squirrel can give birth to three to six litters per year. Each litter has two to five babies. So the gray squirrel population has grown to millions of animals up to the present time.
They eat everything in the forest they see, from wild mushrooms growing on the ground, pine nuts, acorns, walnuts, are all their favorite foods. Some edible forest flowers are also their targets. They will climb high tree branches, pick off flower petals, and come down to the ground to enjoy them. So how do UK farmers deal with gray squirrels? Gray squirrel hunting is an effective means of controlling gray squirrel populations in the UK. But doing so requires preparation and compliance with rules to ensure safety of both the hunter and the surrounding environment. The hunting process includes many steps, starting from fully preparing hunting tools. Using hunting tools like shotguns and pellets are the two main items along with binoculars to observe from afar and hiding places to hide from the sight of Gray Square. Choosing a hiding spot is important by a tall tree or the bush or even a boat. Hunters need to patiently wait for the Gray Squirrels to appear, usually in the early morning or late afternoon. When the gray squirrel approaches, the hunter needs to aim and shoot at the critical position to ensure instant death. After shooting a gray squirrel, harvesting the carcass immediately is necessary to avoid spoiling the carcass and making it impossible to use it for cooking or selling purposes. While hunting gray squirrels, hunters need to follow certain rules. This includes having a valid hunting license, following local regulations, not hunting in inhabited areas, not shooting at other animals, and using guns of this caliber, suitable to ensure safety. In the UK, there are a number of areas where gray squirrel hunting is permitted, including woodland, agricultural, and urban areas where gray squirrels are known to be active. However, according to regulations, each hunter is only allowed to shoot down a maximum of two gray squirrels per day. Although the actual number depends on many factors, such as the skill of the hunter and the number of gray squirrels in the area and weather conditions. Hunting gray squirrels is not only an effective population control measure, but also a challenging and exciting experience for those who enjoy the activity. Cage trapping of gray squirrels has proven to be an effective solution for controlling invasive gray squirrel populations in the UK without harming the animals. This method isn't only simple, but also convenient for everyone, whether a beginner or experienced in the field of hunting. The caves are usually made from metal or wood, small in size, but large enough to hold a gray squirrel. The cage's entrance gate is activated by a spring mechanism, so that when the gray squirrel walks in and touches this mechanism, the door will close automatically, safely trapping the gray squirrel inside. The trapping process happens delicately. First, squirrel catchers place cages in areas 
where gray squirrels often appear, such as around their food source or habitat. An attractive bait is placed in the cage to attract gray squirrels. At the same time, the cage also needs to be placed in a solid position to avoid being pushed over by squirrels. U.S. trap cages requires a valid permit and compliance with local regulations. Trap cages should not be placed in areas where people live to avoid causing unwanted risks. In particular, captured gray squirrels should be released back into the natural environment if there are no gray squirrels in that area. Each trap cage can only catch one or two fish. Each has its own unique approach to dealing with invasive gray squirrel populations. Next, let's see how Australian farmers have controlled the invasive wild rabbit epidemic. But if you like this video so far, make sure to share it with all of your friends so that you can watch it and enjoy it as well. The red carp is an invasive animal native to South America and introduced to Australia in the 1980s. This species of carp has flourished and adapted to the Australian environment, creating a series of problems for ecosystems and local communities. Red carbs reproduce by laying eggs, and this has contributed significantly to the rapid growth of crab populations in Australia. Adult females are capable of laying thousands of eggs each year and often deposit them in burrows or under rocks. The rapid growth of Australia's red crab population is rooted in several important factors. First of all, their ability to reproduce quickly allows them to reach adulthood in just one year and can start laying eggs after about two years. This contributes to a significant increase in red crab populations. Red crabs are also well adapted to their environment, being able to survive and adapt in many different types of environments, including urban environments, which helps them survive and prevail in many different localities. Finally, the lack of natural predators in Australian red crab populations allows the population to grow without inhibition from predators. According to the Australian government estimates, the invasive red crab population has increased to about 200 million, and they are widely distributed in various areas of Australia, such as Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, Western Australia, and South Australia. This situation possesses a series of challenges in terms of managing and controlling the spread of the red crabs in the Australian environment and requires consideration of effective measures to respond to the invasion of the species and conserve it. Protect the local ecosystem. Going forward, research and implementation of red crab management measures, including strategies to control their populations and monitor their spread will be an important part of conservation and recovery efforts and the Australian environmental recovery. There is no need to create a plan that includes collaboration between government agencies, 
scientists, and local communities to deal with red crab invasion and to ensure balance in the Australian ecosystem. Australian roads often become frequent sightings for red crabs, especially in the species habitat and on roads leading to beaches. Red crabs often migrate from their main habitat, from the jungle to the marine areas to reproduce. The migration period usually occurs during the rainy season, from October to November. One of the most famous roads in Australia, where red crabs often appear during migration, the Crab Run Road at Christmas Island. This road is about 10 kilometers long and is located between a jungle area and a beach. Every year, millions of red crabs migrate through this road to reach the beach. And the number of red crabs on these roads can reach millions, even tens of millions. Because red crabs often move slowly, forming a long line on the road, this can cause traffic congestion and pose a potential threat and danger to people and vehicles participating in traffic. To solve this problem, a number of measures have been taken such as closing some roads during the red crab migration, installing warning signs, and planting fences to prevent red crabs from entering the area. Traffic In addition, some people when migrating on this road will use brooms to move them. These measures are designed to ensure the safety of both the people and the red crabs during their migration, while helping to maintain balance in the species habitat in Australia. During migration, Red crabs often create a path from the forest area to the coast, through the city area. This often leads to potential collisions between humans and wildlife. However, people in the area have taken their measures to protect this animal by building bridges. This bridge allows them to climb and cross the road more easily, while also creating safe conditions for pedestrians. This approach not only helps protecting red crabs, but also demonstrates the spirit of environmental conservation and harmony between humans and wildlife. And this is an example of how to combine wildlife protection and traffic safety in areas where human and the wildlife collisions are a problem. Thus, measures to prevent invasion have been used for the species of crabs. They were able to live in harmony with the environment and live peacefully with people. So since these solutions have been affecting in preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below. Plus don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos.
And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well.